Hi everyone, Jan Fursden here from Fursden House. I've had several requests from people asking me to show them how I use my flower presses and how I press my flowers. So I wanted to do just a, a quick little tutorial, if you will, on how I do that. There are many different ways of pressing flowers. Uh, you can get very elaborate and you can get very simple. Um, the ones that I use most often for the majority of the flowers that I press, I use flower presses. Now this one I purchased about a year and a half, two years ago. And unfortunately, they can get rather pricey, but it depends on, you know, how many you're going to press, how many flowers. If you're going to press a lot, then you want something a little bit bigger than this. And my husband, being the crafty person that he is, he just created several for me. Uh, he's created some as large as 16 inches by 16 inches. And uh, here's one that he's done that's, oh, I'm not sure how big it is. Let's see right quick. This one is about seven and a half by six. So um, I'm going to show you, I've already got some pressed flowers in here. And I'll show you how I continue to press them. And then I'll show you some of the other presses that I have. And if, you know, if you're handy with the um, power tools, which I am not, I'm handy at cutting my fingers off probably because I'm not very graceful. Um, but if you are handy with power tools or know someone who is, then you could get them to make you these presses. They're not very expensive to make and they will last forever. Now this one, you can see how fancy it is. And I wanted one really nice one. And then when I realized, um, <laughs> that I was going to be pressing a lot more, that's when my husband said, no problem. I'll just make some, but this is the first one that I had and it literally comes off and you have two pieces of wood and under, uh, in between all of that. It came with these uh, pieces of cardboard. You can see very simple. The edges have been mitered, but you don't even have to do that. You can see how it fits in here. And then you've got the the flat end, I don't know, bolts, maybe that what you call it. Kind of like screws, but the flat end, who knows. And then you've got the these little things. <laughs> I'm not very conversant with tools. But um, I'm going to show you one that I'd already pressed. And what you do is you, you layer it, you put this down, and then you put some paper on it, and then the, the flower and the paper, then the paper, and then the cardstock. Or not cardstock, but cardboard. So you can see how I've done it here. And I just use a paper that I fold over. You can see here, um, it's not exactly cut. You can be as precise as you want, but that's usually not me. And these are um, Lily of the Valley. And you can see they're nice and flat now. And these don't take much at all to press because they're very, um, what I call a frail flower. They're not very hardy. And so you don't want to press those for any great length of time. Otherwise, they'll basically disappear on you. You can also see that the, the paper has become soiled here. And that's, that's very common. I mean, as the flowers dry out, um, whatever moisture is in them, it's got to go somewhere and it goes onto the page. Now I reuse my pages. Um, and what I'll usually do is, well, I'll show you that in just a second. You can also see how I've just folded mine over. To me, that's easier because then I only have to keep track of one piece of paper. But if it's easier for you to just use two separate pieces, just, you know, cut the sizes that you want. And, and that's that. This is just what I do. But once you put the flower in there, then you just fold it over. Then you put this piece of uh, cardboard in there, like so. You take another piece of paper, and here you can see that it's it's been used. I do recycle all of my paper and, and try and use it several times, and it doesn't seem to hurt the flower. And once it gets really icky, I'll just do this number, turn it the opposite way, so that the flowers are lying in a cleaner place. So, again, it I don't think it really matters, but... Um, that's what I do. I don't like to just use something once and then and then that's the end of it. Here are some flowers that I've I'm in the process of pressing. Um, we have some uh, flocks here, these pieces here, and some pinks. They're also called dianthus. You can see the little bugs in there. Yuck. Yep, that's what that is, bugs. And um, then here are what's called pincushion. And so we are going to attempt to do this on camera. And sometimes I'll do a large piece like this. 
A word of warning, things change when you press them. Um, it's like anything. You're taking a lot of moisture out of these plants. The colors can change, the structure can change. Uh, don't be surprised in any of that. Uh, it's, it's very common. Um, sometimes, as I said, I'll take a larger piece like this and do it all at once. Sometimes I'll just use one or two pieces. Um, this is Phlox, and it tends to get much paler when you're pressing it. Um, but, you know, that's just part of it. I still like doing them simply because I like the structure of something. So I'm just going to lay this literally in the middle. <laughs> and this is the fun part. You just squish it. You just lay that down over there. And then you put one of these um, pieces of cardboard in there. And that's that. I mean, it's that easy. And if you're using something like, uh, I remember when we were kids and, and when I was younger and didn't have two pennies to rub together, I would put them inside books. I would take some paper and put them in between two pieces of paper and put them in heavy books and just, you know, leave them like that and then put some weight on it. Um, also, the paper, what you want is something that is slightly absorbent. You don't want a shiny bit of paper or anything that's like copy paper or anything like that because it's really too slick. What you're wanting is some kind of paper that will absorb. Now, some people use like uh, watercolor paper. Um, there's some people use, um, what's that stuff? It's not construction paper. Uh, my recommendation is to use something that's white or beige, you know, something that's very pale because the last thing you want is to have color fading off into the flowers and vice versa. So I use white. It's just the easiest thing. And it's not slick. And I'm not sure if you'll understand me when I say this, but it has a slight tooth feel to it. Um, it's a bit of, um, it's not quite texture, but it's not slick. And they sell this paper in large sheets at Hobby Lobby. And that's where I use typically get, typically get mine. But I have been known to just go through some old books where I've, um, you know, gotten some old cardstock and what have you that I've used that's, that's slightly porous, I guess is the best word to use it, um, and, and use that kind of paper. Now, as you can see, again, this has been used before. This is uh, the leavings, if you will, from pressed flour. So if it's too much, I'll just turn it the opposite way. And then I've got a little bit of clean. That's a little bit there, but, you know, honestly, it does not seem to affect the flowers. So now I'm going to do some different ones. And I'll, I usually don't use much of a stem because my interest is the flower. Now on these, because it's, you know, it's kind of like so, I'm not even sure how to pronounce it, but I'll kind of squish it down onto its stem so that it's laying flat as much as possible. And I will press down until I can get it to stay. And, and literally, you saw what I did. I'll do another one. I'm going to take some of this stem away. And I'm just going to kind of raise it up like that. Now, sometimes that stem might fall off. Well, big deal. It falls off. Go ahead and press, uh, go ahead and, and dry or press the stem along with it. And then you can just, when you're making your cards or anything out of it, you can literally just glue the stem down on and then glue the flower down onto that. So I've got three here and I'm going to go ahead and do all three of them. And again, I'm just taking my finger under here and kind of straightening it up like so. So that it lays flat. Yep, and there's another bug. And that's another part of pressing flowers. <laughs> you get bugs. But they all die in the pressing process or they, they escape really fast. So anyway, there you have. Those are called pincushion. And again, we're just going to lay this over and squish it. I like the word squish. Can you tell? And do that like that. And as you can see, this is filling up really, really fast. So that's why my husband made some, some of his own uh, for me. So we're just going to keep right along. And I'm going to do this. Now I've got some pinks or dianthus. And I'm going to get rid of some of this stem. And these, I'm again, I'm just kind of pressing that flat so that it will lay down. And you just have to literally manipulate it so that it's 
when I put the flower, uh, when I put the paper over it, it uh, will lay down flat on the flower. Sometimes I'll even put the flower face down. If it's uh, kind of a hardy flower, um, these are a little bit what I call frail again, so I don't do that on those. But I will literally lay it face down. You literally have to find out what works for you. Oops, I got this it's a little bit too long here. But yeah, you, you have to figure out what works for you. And once you've done enough of these, you'll figure out what flowers like what. Um, I leave these in, in their presses. Get out of there, you. And um, I leave them in the presses about two weeks. Um, any more than that, and they start to, <laughs> some of them, they start turning brown because they can't, I don't know, they just, they just don't look as good. But two weeks should do it. You can also test them, and if they're not quite as flat as you want, then you can go back and press it some more. Nothing says you can't do it. You know, keep on pressing them. And we just kind of carefully do this. And then we're just going to do that. And then it's ready for the top. And I just, you know, hold it down real tight. And then you just screw these little thingamajiggies on them. That's what they are. That is the official name, thingamajiggies. I don't know. I don't think they're called. Some people use washers. I do know that. It's a little round circle of metal underneath. Um, and the ones that my husband made, of course, he did the washers and everything because he's very precise. But I don't know that you have to use those. And so I'm pressing fairly... Ouch. Itching under my ring. Um, I'm pressing down fairly hard. And I'm going to just keep turning these until it's tight. Um, not so tight that you can't undo it. But, um, well, get going in the right way. So all the time I'm doing this, I'm pressing down on this very hard. And then you just go, you know, to all four of them. And then what I will do is take a little notepad, sticky notes, whatever, and I'll write what is in there and the date that I put it on there. And then I'll usually go ahead and mark it on my calendar or on my uh, on my phone calendar, something like that, so that I know, you know, to check them in about two weeks. Some I'll check earlier, like the Lily of the Valley, I'll check those in about, say, one week just to see how they're doing. Now, I'll end up redoing these because I want to get the Lily of the Valley out of there because they're ready, but I just wanted to show you how I how I did all this. And the next thing I do, like I said, I just put a note on here what kind of flower is in it. Um, that way, I know, okay, this one I can leave in a little bit longer. That one I can't. And, and it's done. So that is the press. This came off of Etsy, and it was Zoe Gibbons Studio. And uh, she is in the, um, in England, I believe. The postage was as much as the uh, the press, so I decided, yikes, not to do that again. But I did want one pretty one, so there that one is. And again, just set it aside with a little note of what's in it, and go from there. Um, these are some that my husband has created. And again, if you're handy in that kind of way... That's fantastic. Um, these are the, I think these are bolts. You can see you know, what they look like. And then that is a washer. I remember that. Maybe the other one is, oh, I don't know what they're called. Anyway, so I want to turn this one upside down. And it's a little funky to finagle because they, they want to fall out. But I want to show you how these are made. And let me get some washers here. Technically, according to my husband, there should be washers on both ends. And I'm missing a smaller one, but oh well, I'll show you what it means. So anyway, what he's done, he he's cut out wood. You can see the thickness of it. Very sturdy because Mr. Ferguson does sturdy stuff. 
and then he's cut out smaller pieces. This is much lighter. Um, and that's all you need is something stiff and light. And on occasion, if you're using these a lot, uh, you might want to wash them with uh, like a bleach solution or something because, you know, as I said, flowers can seep into and, and color and, and, you know, make all kinds of funky little stuff on the wood and on through the paper. So you can go ahead and, you know, clean those off on occasion. And that's all that is. This one, he's done quite a few. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's probably number twelve somewhere because I don't think he does anything in in odd numbers. <laughs> He's very precise, unlike me. Uh, but again, that you can see uh, the holes have been cut through. The washers are on the outside. Or does it have washers? Yeah. Oh, there's the other washer. Duh. Okay, this is how. So we just slip that in there. I hope this makes sense. And this one here, you can see it's a little fussy to deal with. And that one only has one. Okay. So put that in there. And then again, you start with one of these. And we just put it in like so. And then again, your paper. And I have pre-cut some paper for this size. And let me go ahead and get it here, and then I'll show you how I'm going to do the, some more. And again, I just lay mine over. It's just simple, easy. I don't have to keep track of bits of paper flying all over the place. Okay. And then I have got a few more flowers here. Uh, this is some more of the flock, so I'll go ahead and add it. So I'm just going to literally lay it down. And this one, I'm going to catch some of the leaf in it. Cut some of the stem off here. Oops, lay down, lay down, lay down. And then close it up. And then add another piece of the of the thinner wood. It's almost, it's not balsa wood, but it's, it's very lightweight. I'm not sure what kind of wood it is. I'm not a, an expert in that. I just know that it works. But again, the other one had um, thick cardboard. So if that's what you've got, then use that. Um, some people just, um, instead of having a, what, well, what am I doing? Hello. Duh. There. Might want to get the flower in it. Might help it to press. <laughs> and I'll put that one there. And then this one, I'm going to just the opposite way. And then I'll put the little thing on there. And then I'll just leave it empty. Um, at this point, I'll add... And what I usually do, like I'll pick some flowers because if you if you pick a bunch all at once, they'll start to wilt on you and you don't want them wilted. So I'll go ahead and like stop this right here, go ahead and close it up. I might or might not, depending on how long it's going to take me, um, I may go ahead and put the top on or not. just depends. And then, wait a minute, see? This is, I'm not very good at tutorials. Can you tell this? I can tell it. I've only done one or two. Anyway, this is the way you do it. <laughs> and then you put the washers in, but honestly, I don't know that you need the washers, but my husband does not hear me saying that, so. And then you just take these um, little bits here. Let's see if I can... First, let's see if I've got the right size. Yeah, I do, I think. And you just there we go. Again, it's it's just kind of simple. All right, come on you.
Now it might be a couple hours before I get back to um, to cutting more flowers, so I'll, I'm going to go ahead and and close this one up. Sometimes it's easier, depending on the size of the um, and how loose your your bolts are. Uh, you might put a cloth underneath it because when you're at the point where you're all right, get in there, you. When you're tightening these things, the bolt might want to turn. Um, that's why I tend to hold them down here. And you always want to make sure that you have more space because, okay, you can see here, you've got a little bit of space here. You might want more. Um, just depends because, again, the flowers are going to be thick or thicker when you first put them in there, but they won't be thick you know as they get pressed flatter and flatter and then what i will also do is come back maybe a day or so later and tighten it up a little bit more now there are some flowers that do not at least at least for me i'll put it that way they don't appear to do well in presses um orchids orchids i literally put in a um in an envelope and frequently I'll use a, a CD um, envelope I'll just lay them down flat in there and then sort of let them air dry uh, no pressing no anything because I found that if I um, if I put them in a press they basically just disappear I, what can I say I, I don't know how best to explain that it's, it's like they just it's too much for them but um, and again just you're going to have to figure out what works best for you. I make notes as I go along because uh, I've done so many of these and I and I hope to continue doing some that I'll make notes as to what kind of flower works best with what press or what method or, you know, things like that. Roses are very difficult um, because they're so dense. Uh, they tend to just kind of get mushed and they don't always dry well. Sometimes you'll get lucky, sometimes not, but they, they tend not to do really well. Any thick flower that's, you know, like some of them like rosebud or something like that, it's thick and it's not going to do really well because when it gets smushed, there's that word again, um, it just, it's almost unrecognizable. Sometimes it'll work. Um, you just have to play with it. Uh, what are some other flowers? Um, most of the flowers I found, like lavender and salvia, um, dogwood, some of the, what are the others that we have? Those those press really well. Uh, any small flowers and, and relatively flat flowers, those are going to do, do well as well. So um, I hope this has been helpful and that I haven't rambled on too much and, and stuttered and stopped so that you can actually understand me. But um, if you have any questions at all, I'll be happy to um, give you my experience. And then again, you can figure out what works best for you. So um, feel free to comment in the blocks below and um, let me know what you think. I love hearing from you. I hope you're having a blessed uh, weekend. It is lovely out today here in Madison, Alabama. It's The sun is shining and it's I think it's supposed to get up to about 80. And this is the 1st of May. So welcome May. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.